good morning today let us see a course called applied solid mechanics where you will be studying about the simple stresses strains elastic constants principal stresses and strains shear force and bending moment diagrams bending stresses and shearing stresses in beams torsion of circular shafts closed coil helical springs thin cylindrical and spherical shells and thick cylindrical shells this is nothing but a course which is uh, a part of strength of materials course part of strength of material course now let us get into the course introduction so let us assume that a body consists of uh, small particles or molecules between which forces are acting between which forces are acting when an external force acts on a body the body tends to undergo some deformation due to cohesion between the molecules cohesion means a force of attraction between the molecules the body resists deformation this resistance by which material of the body opposes the deformation is known as strength of material these molecular forces resist the change in the form of a body which external forces tend to produce if such external forces are applied to your body its particles are displaced and the mutual displacements continue until equilibrium is established between the external and internal forces the property of bodies of retaining after unloading to their original form is called elasticity it is said that the body is perfectly elastic if it recovers its original shape completely after unloading it is partially elastic if the deformation produced by the external forces does not disappear completely after unloading hooks law states that within an elastic limit stress is directly proportional to strain so let us denote the stress by sigma and small english alphabet e as strain so stress is directly proportional to strain so stress can be mentioned in the unit newton per mm square or pascal newton per meter square or mega pascal so 1 mega pascal is equal to 1 newton per mm square units are very very important for engineers strain is represented by small letter e which is a dimensionless parameter which is not having unit stress sigma denoted by sigma the force of resistance per unit area offered by a body against deformation is known as stress mathematically stress is equal to load by area where p is the axial load and a is the cross sectional area now let us take a member or a bar or a structural member having dimensions like length breadth thickness in some books it is instead of t they would have mentioned as a d depth also it's our wish length breadth thickness which is subjected to an axial tensile load axial tensile load p capital letter p so axial tensile load means the load is passing or line of action of the load is passing through the center of the bar or a structural member okay so it can take a rectangle section or a square section now let us consider a cylindrical bar also or cylindrical rod having diameter d small letter d which is again subjected to an axial tensile load okay l is the length b is the breadth t is thickness and d is diameter so the force of resistance per unit area offered by a body against deformation is known as stress so mathematically stress is load by area now for example this load divided by area area is nothing but b into t 
okay the surface which is normal to the load of application uh, point of application of the load that must be taken as the area now here the load divided by area pi by 4 d square now again i am taking the same structural member or a bar now here i make a cut here i make a cut now you can see here this is r is nothing but the force of internal resistance offered by the material of the bar now this P is balanced by the internal resistance R for the left portion. Now look at the right portion again. So right portion, this force is balanced by the internal resistance force R. So for equilibrium, the external force P or external load P must be equal to the internal resistance R. So strictly speaking, stress is equal to resistance force by the cross-sectional area. So for equilibrium, resistance force is equal to the external load applied. That is, R is equal to P. That's why we write stress is equal to load by area, P by A. You take now cylindrical bar. Okay, we make a cut. You can see here internal resistance force offered by the material. Again, the right hand side, this force is balanced by this internal resistance force R. So stress is equal to resistance force by cross-sectional area is equal to r by a for equilibrium r is equal to p so straight away we can write stress is equal to load by area that is p by a okay now strain when a body is subjected to some external force there is some change of dimension of the body the ratio of change of dimension of the body to the original dimension is known as strain strain is dimensionless so mathematically, we can represent strain is equal to change in dimension by original dimension. Now, linear strain or longitudinal strain or primary strain, which is nothing but change in length divided by original length. Let delta L be the change in length. Now we are applying an axial tensile load, axial tensile load. What will happen? L will increase to L plus delta L. This lateral side dimensions B and T will get decreased. So the final dimension of the B will be B minus delta B. And the final dimension of this T will be T minus delta T. Come over here, cylindrical rod having diameter D. So L will increase to L plus delta L, whereas D will get reduced by an amount of delta D. So the final diameter will be D minus delta D. So linear strain or longitudinal strain or primary strain is given by delta L by L, delta L by L, change in length by original length. Okay, change in length by original length. So here you can see as the external load applied is having a nature of tension, that is a tensile force or a pulling force. Okay, so I can call the strain as tensile strain okay tensile strain okay so tensile strain is called as linear strain or longitudinal strain or primary strain so change in length by original length so length is getting increased so i can call it, i can put it as a increase in length divided by original length so delta l by l here lateral strain or secondary strain is represented by change in breadth by original breadth so in this case b and t both are getting decreased so I can mention here as a decrease in breadth and here thickness, decrease in thickness. So delta B by B here, delta T by T. So delta B by B and delta T by T are lateral strains. Coming to this circular cylinder, change in dia by original dia. Here D is getting decreased diameter. So decrease in dia by original dia, which is nothing but delta D by D. Delta D by D. So what is lateral strain? Lateral strain is nothing but the strain. For example, here you are applying the load. Okay, the strain that is happening at right angles, right angles, that is at 90 degree to the direction of the applied load is known as lateral strain. It's known as lateral strain. Now we are applying the axial compressive load. So when you just apply the axial compressive load here, L is decreased to L minus delta L and B is increased to B plus delta B, and T is increased to T plus delta D. When you come to this diameter, diameter D is increased from D to 
d plus delta d okay where delta l change in length delta b change in breadth delta t change in thickness delta d is change in diameter so delta l by l is a linear strain delta b by b delta t by t delta d by d or the lateral strains so here compressive stress as the load is compressive in nature i can call this as a compressive stress okay then strain is nothing but the compressive strain so as i mentioned here decrease in length okay decrease in length okay and increase in breadth increase in thickness increase in diameter you can see here increase so delta b by b delta t by t delta d by d or the lateral strains or secondary strain and sometimes compressive stress is also called as a direct stress or direct compressive stress also sometimes this uh, strain is also called as a direct strain or direct compressive strain also so we know that stress is directly proportional to strain and if you remove this proportionality let us introduce a constant of proportionality e capital letter e which is nothing but the engs modulus engs modulus so stress is given by load by area strain e is given by change in length by original length delta l by l so delta l is equal to cross multiply it pl by ae so delta l is equal to pl by ae so stress by strain is equal to engs modulus stress divided by strain is equal to engs modulus so this delta l is nothing but extension or elongation or increase in length if p is tensile if the applied load is tensile means delta l can be called as a extension or elongation or increase in length if p is compression means we call it as a contraction or decrease in length we must keep in mind shear stress shear stress is represented by tau okay so let us take a a small element rectangular element of unit thickness having length l and h height we are applying a tangential force p or a shear force p okay so let me make a small cut here so you can see here okay so this p this p is resisted by this if you make a cut here and this p is balanced by the internal resistance shear force r and this p is balanced by this internal resistance force r if you just put together join together both are equal and opposite will get cancel each other so the only one shear force acting on the top is p which is resisted by the support at the bottom in the opposite direction other p okay both the shear forces are equal and opposite direction so shear stress is equal to shear resistance force by shear area okay shear resistance force is r and this area is nothing but length into thickness is 1 length into thickness 1 and for equilibrium r resistance force must be equal to p so we can represent it by p by l into 1 so shear stress tau is equal to p by l into 1 mathematically and if you take another example so here i have taken two plates which are riveted here okay where two equal and opposite forces are acting when we are trying to pull on either side by an equal and opposite forces these two plates are touching each other so that the tangential forces will act across the section the stress induced in a body when subjected to two equal and opposite forces which are acting tangentially across the resisting section as shown in figure as a result of which the body tends to shear off across the section is known as shear stress the corresponding strain is shear strain so you can see here like this it will deform so shear strain is de denoted by sign you can see here the same rectangular element i have taken okay we are applying the force so deformation dl dl or delta l delta l so angle is psi right denoted with sign the angle okay the shear strain for example tan psi is equal to dl by h for smaller angles tan psi can be approximated to psi so shear strain psi is equal to dl by h dl by h so modulus of rigidity or shear modulus or rigid modulus which are denoted by c or n or g is equal to shear stress by shear strain is equal to tau by psi 
So shear stress by shear strain is called as shear modulus. Stress by strain is called as Young's modulus. So stress by strain can be tensile stress by tensile strain or compressive stress by compressive strain. So stress by strain is X modulus. Shear stress by shear strain is the shear modulus. Elastic limit. Within an elastic limit, the body will regain its original shape and size when the external force is removed. This limiting value of force up to and within which the deformation completely disappears on the removal of the force. The value of stress corresponding to this limiting force is known as elastic limit of the material. So you can see here the stress strain diagram. Okay, so experimental one for a mild steel specimen, okay, which is conducted in a UTM, universal testing machine, tensile test. So you can see here the ultimate strength, the fracture or breaking point, necking formation, and the yield strength. And this is the proportional limit, the elastic limit. Okay, upper yield point, lower yield point, all those things here. So factor of safety. So factor of safety is nothing but the ultimate strength divided by the maximum permissible stress or the working stress or maximum allowable stress. So this factor of safety must be always greater than one, then only the design will be safe. So if factor of safety is greater than one, design is safe. Thank you.